booktube it's missy and i am going to be doing a stephen king collection review i don't know how long this is going to be i apologize if it is too long and i'm sorry that you actually listened to me and my scratchy voice during the entire time but i just don't want to drag my heels on these videos just because who knows when i'll be able to have time to get to it so I want to say thank you to Christy Boys for requesting this video and I hope you guys get kind of um, a good insight on all of these books. I'm going to take a little bit of time, like a little mini review for each book and there's 10 here. Um, we're going to start off with my very favorite uh, book from Stephen King so far that I've read and it is called Desperation. Um, Hopefully you can, there's not a real big glare in it. <clears throat> so let's talk about this book first. Uh, by the way, all of these books were read mostly um, between high school and college. I was one of those, the bigger the better type of readers. And so I wanted all of my books to be very long so I could stay in the world as long as possible. And if that's the kind of reader you are, then you will have no problems with Stephen King books because most of the time they are extremely long. So for example, um, this book, Desperation, is 690 pages. And I know there's a tag going around, like the big, the big book tag. And um, this will be the unofficial big books tag because all of these books are gigantic. So Desperation. It's about um, a couple who is driving on a deserted road um, I, I guess it's like Route 66, but it's between two cities. There is um, a town called Desperation that they are heading to, and um, something happens where a cop pulls them over, and they are really scared because they don't know what's going on, and uh, the cop ends up taking them in and locking them in a cell. When they get to the town, the town is deserted, and there's a whole bunch of people um, in this cell with them that the cop has collected kind of like other people passing through. So um, this is actually a monster book. And Stephen King is um, he's known for his monster books. So when you want to think about his description and the way he, he writes things where you can actually smell what he's talking about and and feel the sense of dread because it is just so so scary there is an ancient monster in this book um, that has been buried underground for a very long time and it has now escaped this underground world and it is taking over this town desperation and um, the people in the book have to figure out how to close it how to get rid of the monsters and what happens after that. So this is a very, very good book to start off with, <laughs> in my opinion. I love, love Stephen King. I'm not going to give this to you in order just because I don't remember how I read it. But the next book is called Insomnia. And this book is, God, this book is, what is it, 787 pages long. This is a really crappy cover. Um... I know there's a better one, and the one that I borrowed a long time ago um, was better. But this is about an old man who loses his wife, and he um, ends up becoming an insomniac. Every every night, his, his hours get shorter and shorter, where he's able to sleep to the point where he's unable to sleep anymore, and he's just, like, staying up all the time. Um, the old man sees things, so he starts seeing, like, auras, and... And everybody has an aura, but they have like this string attached, almost like a balloon. And he can see these balloons. And there's some kind of weird, almost like goblin or troll guy in the book that is cutting these balloons off of people. And the old man gets scared because he's worried that he's the, this cutting of the, um, of like these strings is, is going to kill the people. And so he actually recruits his neighbor. And I don't know how... It transpires. I kind of forgot how the neighbor gets involved, but she becomes an insomniac as well. And they go to hunt out this troll so he doesn't do damage to anybody else 
in um, the city that this old man lives in. Really, really good book. Super weird. Lots and lots of um, things to think about, about, you know, sleeping and what happens when you become delusional. Like, who knows if he's just delusional or what, but that was a really good book. Next is um, Leslie's Story. This book is actually not even that long. How long is this one? This one is 512 pages. So pretty, pretty short for Stephen King. This is about a wife who just lost her husband and her husband used to go to a place that he would um, call his like secret hiding place, but it's actually like another dimension. And um, his wife ends up going there somehow. Again, these these books are, are these are just what I remember from reading it a long time ago. I, I'm talking like 10 years ago that I read these books. So um, very, very interesting. You get to see like these different like scary monsters that live in this other dimension and she's hiding from them, but she's doing it so that way she can kind of like finish a almost like a, a thing that he was trying to, to do. So she's um, like he has unfinished business that she is pursuing. So she's trying to do that. And um, that one was really good. <clears throat> All right, then we have Needful Things. This is a really old book. This is like his 1980, 1990s kind of book. The other ones are a little bit or, uh, newer. And um, this one is 685 pages. This is about a weird man that moves into this town in Maine. All of Stephen King's books are in Maine almost. And um, he sets up shop with weird things in it. And these weird things have some kind of power over whoever buys it and he's making these people do stuff like he's almost like if you touch one of his weird things then you become possessed and then you do things that you don't want to do so this little boy finds out that this man this creepy man is selling things that are bad for the town folk and the boy has to solve um, the mystery and help his fellow neighbors out and get this guy to leave town. But again, this is Stephen King, so there's lots of crazy stuff that happen before the um, the story ends and, and everything is solved. All right, next is the dream catcher. This is where I got same shit, different day. Um, my favorite quote of all time. This is about a group of friends that grew up together um, from when they're really little. they I can't remember how many kids, I wanna say four. There's four kids and then the fifth one has um, Down syndrome. I think that's what it says in the book. The, the movie was terrible and the, in the movie it, it, it didn't show that but I believe the boy has Down syndrome in the book. And um, so they all are friends when they're little. They actually save the, um, the little boy that's handicapped in the book from getting his his you know butt kicked by a bunch of bullies and that's how he becomes friends with these kids and then you go up and now they're adults and they plan on hanging out at this cabin in the woods for the weekend um and that's when everything hits the fan and there's an alien invasion and if you like aliens you're gonna love this book it's really creepy and these are like super super creepy aliens one of the aliens just like the movie um takes over the friend and so the friend is and this is where it gets cool because Stephen King can write such crazy crazy books so the character is stuck in his mind and he's hiding in like part of his brain he's hiding in the memory section and he's trying to keep the alien from being able to like locate all of his memories and he's you know trying to get the alien to like leave and so not only is he possessed by this alien he's walking around, but he's also hoping that his friends are okay and all of his friends have to deal with the alien invasion. And somehow the friend, the, the um, handicapped boy, he's also dying of cancer now. And he has to, somehow he's going to help, um, help the alien invasion like 
it's so creepy. And I don't want to give anything away, but it's, it's very, very creepy. Read it, read it, read it. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry. Um, Dreamcatcher is 620 pages. All right. I'm not doing too bad. Okay, the next book is called Duma Key. This is about a man. I don't know why all, the, all these people are losing um, family members. He moves to Derma Key, which is in the Florida Keys. He uh, lost his wife, and he's going there to, um, to kind of like learn about himself, get away from his past. And while he's there, he, um, he ends up being able to paint. And it's very strange, and he's never been able to paint before, and whatever he paints comes true. And then there's like this hidden, um, like monster lady that is, <laughs> she's hiding in a bottle and somehow she's causing havoc on, um, the people of this little town in the Florida Keys and the guy has to, um, the protagonist has to find out how to fix it and super, super creepy again, like all of Stephen King's books, if you if you want to read about um, paintings that come to life and about this man <laughs> and how he he saves the town there's that one next is Stephen King's The Dark Half this is another like 80s early 90s book about a man who is a writer and he has these terrible headaches and whenever he has these really bad headaches there's a flock of birds that he sees and this um, happens to him when he's little and then when he, he's an adult. So when it happens when he's an adult, he thinks back, oh my gosh, I remember this happening when I was little, but for the, a really long time, it hasn't happened. And come to find out, he's got like a, a twin that is actually evil and makes him do bad things. But somehow the evil twin actually becomes real and now he's like fighting himself in the story and you have to find out uh, what happens. This is also a movie and they did a really good job at this movie. You, normally movies are bad but this one was actually pretty good and I liked it. Three more books. Um, next is Bag of Bones. They actually had this on HBO as a like TV miniseries and this one's pretty good. I haven't finished watching it yet but this is about a man who loses his wife again. Um, she gets hit by a car or dies of cancer or something, but she was pregnant and so he's really upset and he goes to his, um, his cabin, you know, he's got his like main home in like in the city and then he goes to like a, a small town in Maine that has a cabin. He lives there. He's planning on, um, finishing his book writing. No, no, that's, that's backwards. He, he wants to finish writing the book he's writing and, um, he starts having these weird visions of, of like somebody from the lake that he, his house is next to and he meets this neighbor and all these weird things happen and um, there's lots of like flashbacks but not of his life of whoever this ghost that's trying to like get him to solve a murder or whatever's happening um, in his town. Am I, I'm doing a really crappy job on reviewing any of these books, right? I'm sorry, but this was really good. I liked it. <sighs> Next book is The Cell, and this is kind of like a zombie book. So um, everyone who was talking on their cell phone at the time of the great, um, like, electronic pulse shortage kind of thing turns into a zombie, and the protagonist ended up not talking on his cell phone. I think he drops it. When, the, when it happens and so he's one of those survivors and he has to try to figure out how to get rid of these zombies or kill them off or something. <laughs> God. Sorry. Oh, I stopped talking about how long all these books were. Do you guys care? I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll cut it. I'll cut it up. This one, Needful Things, was... Needful Things was 690 pages. Um, Duma Key was 607 pages. <laughs> Gosh, 
I'm sorry. Um, Dreamcatcher is 620 pages. Bag of Bones is 528 pages. Right? Yeah, 528 pages. The Dark Half was 431 pages. Wow, that one was a short one. The cell is, okay, what is that? Oh, here we go. Um, 449 pages. So he does do short books. This one and the dark half was actually doable. Like you could sit down and read it like a normal person. The other ones were really long. And this is the biggest book that I've read from Stephen King. This is Under the Dome. If you guys have seen the TV series, I haven't read it, watched it yet. Um, and I'm not planning on watching it because I don't want them to mess it up. I'm so sick of having, you know, especially Stephen King books completely ruined by someone because you can't, you can't really express it in, in visually you know, with actors, the things that he talks about and the, and the psychological things that he's dealing with. Um, this is a really, really weird, weird book. And I was very disappointed at the end of this story and completely, like, flabbergasted. I, I couldn't... <sighs> this is... I, I, I'm not even going to tell you what happens at the end because you're going to be like, Wh what? Um, but this book is... 1,729 pages, 1,729 pages, and I read it all in three days. It was really, really good. It basically, what happens is there's a town in Maine that this dome pops up out of nowhere, and the people inside the dome are stuck in there. They can't get out. The people on the outside can't get in. Um, the military has come and tried to bomb the dome, but it's... They don't know what kind of material it's made out of, but it's super, super thick, and they can't, they can't, like, get through. The people on the inside are starting to go crazy, and it's almost like an experiment kind of thing. They're like, well, how long will a society in present day last before they just go crazy and then kill everybody off? And that's what this book is about. Um, just watching what happens to these folks in this small town and how un- civilized they become within a week like good grief these people just go insane somebody already starts trying to become like leader of this entire town like like a new mayor the, he's got the police force under his pocket um people are scared that things are going to go terribly wrong and all hell breaks loose and you have to find out what happens to the survivors of this extremely difficult time and um, that was insane. So that was the 10 books that I wanted to talk about. And I, I would like to read all of Stephen King's books. But he's my favorite author. And that's because I know when I pick up a Stephen King book, it's going to be good. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be weird, creepy, suspenseful, intriguing, um, just delicious in every sense of the word. Smelling, hearing, sensing. You can feel it. Your bot, your you know, heart's pumping. You, there's action upon action upon action. Maybe not like explosions and, and the kind of action that um, you get with a blockbuster movie, but intense scenes where you're just like, ah, ah, I'm going to die if I don't find out what happens next. I hope that helps. Christy boys, let me know down below how, what you thought about this review. Hopefully you liked it and um, I satisfied your <laughs> curiosity on Stephen King. And if you guys have any other questions about these books, please let me know down below. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. Bye. Um, Duma Key was 607 pages. Next is Stephen King's The Dark Half. This is another like 80s, early 90s book about a man who is a writer. And he has these terrible headaches. And whenever he has these really bad headaches... There's a flock of birds that he sees. And this um, happens to him when he's little. 
and then when he, he's an adult. So when it happens when he's an adult, he thinks back, oh my gosh, I remember this happening when I was little, but for the, a really long time, it hadn't happened. And come to find out, he's got like a, a twin that is actually evil and makes him do bad things. But somehow the evil twin actually becomes real and now he's like fighting himself in the story and you have to find out uh, what happens. This is also a movie and they did a really good job at this movie. You, normally movies are bad, but this one was actually pretty good and I liked it. The dark half was 431 pages. Wow, that one was a short one. Three more books. Um, next is Bag of Bones. They actually had this on HBO as a like TV miniseries. And this one's pretty good. I haven't finished watching it yet. But this is about a man who loses his wife again. Um, she gets hit by a car or dies of cancer or something. But she was pregnant and so he's really upset. And he goes to his, um, his cabin. You know, he's got his like main home and like in the city and then he goes to like a, a small town in Maine that has a cabin. He lives there. He's planning on um, finishing his book writing. No, no, that's that's backwards. He, he wants to finish writing the book he's writing. And um, he starts having these weird visions of, of like somebody from the lake that he, his house is next to. And he meets this neighbor and all these weird things happen. And um, there's lots of like flashbacks, but not of his life, of whoever, this ghost that's trying to like get him to solve a murder or whatever's happening um, in his town. Am I, I'm doing a really crappy job on reviewing any of these books, right? I'm sorry. But this was really good. I liked it. Bag of Bones is 528 pages, right? Yeah, 528 pages. <sighs> Next book is The Cell, and this is kind of like a zombie book. So um, everyone who was talking on their cell phone at the time of the great um, like electronic pulse shortage kind of thing turns into a zombie, and the protagonist ended up not talking on his cell phone. I think he drops it when, the, when it happens, and so... He's one of the survivors, and he has to try to figure out how to get rid of these zombies or kill them off or something. <laughs> God. The cell is... Wait, what is that? Oh, here we go. Um, 449 pages. So he does do short books. This one... And the dark half was actually doable. Like you could sit down and read it like a normal person. The other ones were really long. And this is the biggest book that I've read from Stephen King. This is Under the Dome. If you guys have seen the TV series, I haven't read it, watched it yet. Um, and I'm not planning on watching it because I don't want them to mess it up. I'm so sick of having, you know, especially Stephen King books completely ruined by someone because you can't. You can't really express it in, in visually, you know, with actors, the things that he talks about and the, and the psychological things that he's dealing with. Um, this is a really, really weird, weird book. And I was very disappointed at the end of this story and completely, like, flabbergasted. I, I couldn't... <sighs> this is... I, I, I'm not even going to tell you what happens at the end because you're going to be like, Wh What? Um, but this book is 1,729 pages, 1,729 pages, and I read it all in three days. It was really, really good. It basically, what happens is there's a town in Maine that this dome pops up out of nowhere, and the people inside the dome are stuck in there. They can't get out. The people on the outside can't get in. Um, the military has come and tried to bomb the dome, but it's, they don't know what kind of material it's made out of, but it's super, super thick and they can't, they can't like get through. The people in the inside are starting to go crazy and it's almost like an experiment kind of thing. They're like, well, how long will a society 
in present day last before they just go crazy and then kill everybody off. And that's what this book is about. Um, just watching what happens to these folks in this small town and how uncivilized they become within a week. Like, good grief. These people just go insane. Somebody already starts trying to become, like, leader of this entire town, like like a new mayor. The, he's got the police force under his pocket. Um, people are scared that things are going to go terribly wrong. And all hell breaks loose. And you have to find out what happens to the survivors of this extremely difficult time. And um, that was insane. So that was the 10 books that I wanted to talk about. And I, I would like to read all of Stephen King's books, but he's my favorite author, and that's because I know when I pick up a Stephen King book, it's going to be good. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be weird, creepy, suspenseful, intriguing, um, just delicious in every sense of the word. Smelling, hearing, sensing, you can feel it. Your bot, your you know, heart's pumping. You, there's action upon action upon action. Maybe not like explosions and and the kind of action that um, you get with a blockbuster movie, but intense scenes where you're just like, <gasps> ah, I'm gonna die if I don't find out what happens next. I hope that helps, Christy boys. Let me know down below how what you thought about this review. Hopefully, you liked it and. Um, I satisfied your <laughs> curiosity on Stephen King. And if you guys have any other questions about these books, please let me know down below. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. Bye.